I'm a family man to start with. I love God. I try to be a good Christian, but fail miserably sometimes. The biggest thing about me is I like helping people. You know, I always have. I'm Richard Bowman. I'm 48 years old. I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease when I was 46 years old back in 2019. I had my sleep DBS surgery in January 2021, and uh, it's really improved my life. I've been married to Richard for 29 years. We've been together for 30 years. Richard, he was always the one that when somebody needed something, they called him. If your car broke down on the side of the road, you, we called him. Before Parkinson's, my life was uh, pleasant and wonderful. Like I said, I enjoyed helping people. I, I did lots of things, um, built lots of stuff, uh, enjoyed life. Around 2013 is when I first started knowing, noticing that I had problems. Uh, I, had, uh, I kept carrying my arm real stiff, like it was in a sling. I had gait issues, Just couldn't walk right, kept dragging my right foot. I knew something was wrong. We thought it was back, you know, because I had back pain, so we thought it was just a nerve or something pinched. We ruled out stroke, because that's one of the first things we want to look at. So we ruled that out. You know, I was going to have back surgery more than likely. And uh, turns out it wasn't the case. One of the first places I went to was a neurologist in Texarkana. He said, he looks at me and he says, I think you got Parkinson's. And so he, he says, uh, my nurse will give you some literature on it. And it says on Wikipedia, it says, most Parkinson patients have a lifespan expectancy of five to 14 years after diagnosis. I'm 41 years old. So yes, we ran from that diagnosis hard and fast. And uh, so fast forward to Dr. Harris, she watched me walk. She tells me I have Parkinson's. And of course I'm thinking about death. You know, and uh, she's, she's sitting in front of me. She, she sees that I'm upset. She puts her, places her hand on my knee and she says, Richard, she said, it's not a death sentence. She said, with the right medicine, we can, can help control you and make your life better. And she says, we even have brain surgery that we can do, DBS brain surgery. After Parkinson's, everything started declining. He lost himself. He lost everything about who he was. We lost him. Parkinson's in the eye of a caregiver is one of those things that's so hard to take. It takes away your life. And not just your physical life, it takes away your mental life and your, your emotional life. My life was pretty miserable most of the time. Uh, when my medicine was working, it was pretty well great. You know? But that was for about two hours at a time. And that was about four times a day that I felt great. The rest of the time, I was miserable. My medicine would burn off. I would feel like I had real high fever. I just wanted to put my head down in, in my hands. And uh, so we did the medicine. About a year later, you know, she would kept up in my dosage, up in my dosage, you know, how many pills would take a, a day. And a year later, I go back to see her, and she says, when she asked me, she said, have you thought about the DBS surgery? Parkinson's is part of my language, but it's hell. It really is. And uh, so we went to meet Dr. Wilder, and we finally got to meet her. And well, she's phenomenal, very good doctor. So she tells me about this, about the surgery, tells me about the DBS stimulator, and asks me what I think. And I told her, I told her, I said, if you think it'll help me, I'm ready right now. Richard was a very interesting case because he was late in being diagnosed with Parkinson's. He was diagnosed instead with arthritis and chronic pain and was really kind of bounced around. Nobody really understood what was going on with him. He was started on medicine and it worked like a lot of patients. It worked for a time, but he also was having to escalate his medicine use. He was developing wearing off and he also had untreated body pain in Parkinson's that 
he just felt like even with the medicine, his global mobility was not where he wanted it to be. So those things, wearing off of medicine, dyskinesia as a side effect of medicine, and having side effects from medicine, all those are indications for deep brain stimulation. So Richard really became a good candidate right away when I met him because he was already on the maximum dose of tolerated medicine with residual immobility that was untreated. Yeah, I, seen, I, I met with her in uh, December the 23rd of 2020. And January 20th of 2021, I was having surgery. It was uh, actually it was probably that night of the surgery when we went for our walk. Because uh, I had my gait back, I had my strut back, you know? Right then, I knew we were on the right track. Dr. Wilden comes in the next morning and she says, um, Well, what do you think? And we look at her, both of us look at her and say, what's going on? She says, we, you know, we don't have the second surgery done yet and, and he's already improving. And she looks in green real big and she says, laughs, she says, that's what we call the honeymoon effect. Richard also had a wonderful honeymoon effect. Um, what struck me so much about him was the first day after surgery, he was like, almost in tears because he's like, I cannot believe how much my pain has improved. He was so amazed at how much better he felt. And his wife too was very moved by it. She said, you know, I have been underestimating his pain for a long time. Now everything is returning. He's walking right, he's holding his arm right, he's riding again, he's getting his physical traits back that he had lost before. And the difference from then to now is that then he was a person that kind of wanted to just hide in a corner. Now he's the person that wants to be in the middle of the room. The surgery has given me my life back and would I do it again? Yes, I would. That's not to say that deep brain stimulation is better or worse than medicine. We simply don't have a cure, so the more tools we can add to a family's ability to cope, the better. Well, you need to find a good doctor, a good surgeon, which I, I, got, I was fortunate enough to find. Have an open mind. Have an open mind and know that there's people there to help you. The surgery is to help you. So I definitely tell all families, if you are a candidate for deep brain stimulation, please consider it because it is simply another tool. Seeing him now, when he heads out that door and he goes down to the shop and he works on his truck or somebody else's, or when he's out in the pasture on his tractor or whatever he's doing, it's worth it. After the surgery, I would say, she, hopefully she'll say that she enjoys being around me most of the time. So, and she'll always, she, she has this little saying that she tells everybody that, she may not always like me, but she always, always loved me. While MRI-guided DBS procedures can offer benefits, all forms of surgeries performed in the brain can pose serious risks. These risks include infection, excessive bleeding, adverse reactions to anesthesia, severe brain injury, or death. It is important to discuss the risks of pursuing a treatment with your physician to understand how they should impact your personal therapy decision. An MRI-guided DBS procedure is not for everyone. You may need to meet certain medical guidelines assessed by your physician. You will likely undergo a screening process to see if MRI-guided DBS is right for you. MRI-guided DBS is an advanced technology that is not available at all care centers and requires approval from your insurance to cover the expense. Check with your health insurance plan or your regional Medicare or Medicaid office to find out if your policy covers this procedure.